what affects the taste of the wine. Some of it is in the uh, growing of the wine and some of it is in the enology or putting the wine together. So the climate, um, just between Napa and Sonoma, the climate changes, the soil changes. They're 45 minutes drive from each other, but they're different. The fermentation, of how, how do they use the yeast? Uh, in some cases, the um, outdoors, if you have a lot of uh, wind blowing around, that blows yeast uh, that's natural in the uh, environment. Or what yeast do they use internally in the, f in the uh, enology part? The blending, how do they put them together? The aging, how long do they uh, leave them um, age? And what kind of barrels do they age them in? All that matters. Wineries go through. Soil is, of course, a necessary medium for the grapevines to grow in as it supports the root structure and influences the drainage levels, the amounts of minerals and nutrients that it's exposed to. The grapes extract the flavors and the attributes from the soil. So if you used to grow wheat in that dirt, the wine's going to have a wheat flavor. If you used to grow rice, it's going to have a rice flavor. If you used to grow grapes, uh, no, you do grow grapes. <laughs> if you used to grow apples, you're going to get an apple component. That's where those flavors come from. They don't put apples in there. It's from whatever used to be grown over the years and millenniums, I guess. The process of fermentation in wine is the catalyst function that turns the grape juice into alcoholic beverage, the catalyst, so the thing that pushes uh, the grape juice to become alcohol. Components are extracted through fermentation would include the aromas, the flavor. More complex flavors and aromas are present because of the release of the flavonoids from the skins and the seeds. The color, the color of a wine depends largely on the degree of extraction of the color or the contact time with the skin of the grape. They separate the grape from the skin soon enough after picking and you can make a very light red wine take it right out so when they're doing white wine that's the difference the grapes are the same they take the white wine and they um, for the white wine they take the skins out immediately they just crush them and take the skins out and the darker they want the wine the longer they leave it sitting in the uh, skins tannin is a group of astringent substances found in the skins, seeds, and stems of grapes, and also in oak barrels. Tannins provide structure, texture, and ageability to the wine. Ageability meaning uh, some wines they'll say, yeah, this is good to drink the minute you get it home. And others they might say, uh, you can drink this 10, 20 years from now. Low tannin would be associated with light-bodied red wines tannin would be the pucker factor, right?
Blending of the wines. Some of the most famous wines in the world consist of a blend of complementary grape varietals such as Champagne and Bordeaux regions. It blends several complementary grapes coming from the same or different appellations or blending the same grape from different appellations or the same grape from different years. Blending, for example, a 75% of a Cabernet with 25% of a Merlot grape. This is where the winemakers uh, make their money by coming up with the proper blends that people would like. Uh, also, uh, the blends that make economic sense because some years are cheaper than others. So you might put some 25% of the cheaper year. It's not so great, but if you put 75% of the better year, which is more expensive, the the taste is fine. Reasons for blending are to adjust or fine tune the aromas and flavors the acid, the tannin, the alcohol, the fruit, the color, or the cost. Some common blends would be Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, Syrah and Grenache, Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon, Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay and Pinot Blanc, and Sangiovese and Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon. The next time you enjoy a glass of wine, think about your place in history. Wine may date back to 6000 BC. Nowadays, we drink it from bottles, not animal skins, but the basic principles of winemaking remain the same. Wine grapes grow best in temperate climates, but if grapevines are well protected, they can survive a Canadian winter. The riper the grapes, the sweeter the wine, so growers wait as long as possible before harvesting their crop. Pickers gather grapes by hand, cutting off the bunches with shears to avoid tearing the plant. For red wine, winemakers use the entire red grape, juice, skin, pulp, and even seeds. For white wine, they use just the juice of white grapes. While the winemaking process itself is certainly a factor, the quality of the grapes is what will ultimately determine the quality of the wine. Grapes are affected by weather, by soil conditions, and by how the vines are pruned during and between seasons. The grapes go into the crusher, then into the presser, which squeezes out the juice. Inside the winery, the result of all that crushing and pressing ends up in large stainless steel tanks. The winemaker adds yeast to make the sugar in the grape juice convert to alcohol. That's called fermentation. Winemakers constantly experiment with fermentation to try to improve the quality of their wine. They take samples of grape juice and mix them with different types of yeast. Yeast is found throughout the environment, in wild berries for instance. They hydrate the yeast with a bit of grape juice, then pour the mix into the grape juice sample, let it ferment, then see how it turns out. The big fermentation tanks are refrigerated and monitoring their temperature is critical. White wine must be fermented at 17 degrees Celsius, red wine at 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. The fermentation period depends on the type of wine. White wine has to ferment for three weeks, red wine for just 10 days. Rosé wine is somewhat of a half-breed, made with red grapes but fermented slowly like white wine. It comes out pink. There's an extra step in making red wine. During fermentation, they drain the tank to aerate the wine. The oxygen helps the yeast work faster over the short 10-day fermentation period. 
Then they pump the wine back in through the top of the tank to mix everything thoroughly. During fermentation, they not only monitor temperature, but also the sugar level. As the juice becomes wine, the sugar level drops and the alcohol level increases. Except for very sweet wines, fermentation is done when the sugar's gone. And the alcohol content is 11 to 13 percent for red wine, 11 to 11.5 percent for white and rosé. The wine is stored for a few months, then it's run through several pressure filters to remove any particles. Then comes time to bottle the wine. Large wineries have fully automated bottling plants, smaller operations, semi-automated systems like this one. The key in bottling wine is to avoid getting air inside because oxygen turns wine sour. The colored wine bottles protect the wine from light, which can also affect the taste. People have used cork to plug wine bottles since ancient times because it creates a tight seal that keeps the air out. Cork, incidentally, is a type of tree bark. It grows back so the tree isn't harmed. Inside the bottle, the wine continues to undergo subtle organic changes as it ages. Let's finish up this uh, lecture by talking about some uh, wine and food compatibility, which is where we're heading for most of the rest of the course. What wines go with what foods? When you talk about wines, you'll hear them talk about complexity and finesse, all of which like means nothing to us, B but we can relate it to things that we do uh, know what they are. Com complexity would be like if you mixed milk and chocolate. You can tell it's milk, and you tell it's chocolate. The finesse would be how smooth it tastes. So complexity is you take, you know, there's two different things in there. There's milk and there's chocolate, but you can tell when you drink it, it's chocolate milk. And the finesse is, mmm, goes down smooth, or, or is it a heavy chocolate? Or doesn't doesn't taste good. So that would be the finesse is how smooth that chocolate milk tastes. Some pairing basics, don't match strong to delicate. Pairing a big, powerful, high alcohol or high tannin wine with a light, delicate dish and vice versa is really a good idea. Acidity is your friend. People tend to be wary of wines described as high acid, like Sauvignon Blanc or Muscadet, but there's no better quality in a wine for matching a rich, creamy or cheesy sauce, deep fried foods, uh, or uh, fish dishes. In addition, tart wines go better with tart foods, such as a vinaigrette uh, on a salad. So you want a tart wine with that. Tannins pair well with fat. That's because the astringency of the uh, tannins cuts through the viscosity of the fat. Follow the don't upstage the star rule. If you have an amazing bottle of wine, you want to taste the wine. So show that off, especially if you have an older vintage, which they tend to be more subtle, their flavors are less flamboyant. You don't want some kick-ass uh, food that you're not going to then uh, taste the wine. So don't serve a wildly complex dish with it. A simple dish will allow the wine to be the center of attention.